All right, it's day 11, and as you can see, this is the first uh, specimen to germinate, seed one. Um, the root has turned green. I thought it would stay white, but apparently if it's above the soil, it'll start photosynthesizing and making chlorophyll. So as you can see, um, the stalk has grown longer, and the seed pod is still attached, the double double seed. So as you can see the double mutant seed is still attached and you can see a little tail hanging off the, the end of it, you know, right over there. Uh, I think that's basically the dead root system of what I believe to be the second plant inside there. But we won't really know until uh, the seed falls off and then I can break it open and see if there was anything else inside. So you can see the cotyledons are a lush green and I'll get a better angle here. And this is the underside of one of the cotyledons. So here we're looking at the base of plant number two and on the first day it had phototropism causing it to bend in this direction and the next day I turned the source of the light I turned the entire pot around so the plants wouldn't just fall to one side or sway too heavily to one side and that caused phototropism to make the cells along this edge this side grow faster and cause the entire plant to bend that way today so the response is fairly rapid and as you can see this is the most healthy looking plant and here's seed number four and as you can see it's already broken free of its seed prison so to speak and the seed husk is just lying next to it on the ground so I'm gonna get rid of that right after this and you know the cotyledons have yet to unfold and I almost missed this but actually there's a fifth seed that's germinating and it seems to be um, shedding its seed rather quickly and you know by tomorrow I could see cotyledons and a elongated stem sticking far out of the soil and that's a pleasant surprise I almost overlooked this one and I think you know for the seeds that germinated later they actually seem to have an easier time you know shedding off their seed husks just because uh, they've been soaking for so long in water so it's probably softer. And just as I finish saying that, uh, here's a six seed that's uh, germinating, uh, shooting a root system. Okay, it's day 12, and as you can see uh, for seed number one, the root has turned nearly entirely green, and so have the lateral roots, which are still trying to burrow their way into the soil. And this is plant number two and this is the one that had the textbook development um, you know the stem is the longest out of all the plants and this too has two larger dark green cotyledons uh, waiting to break free of the seed and this is plant three um, this is the one that's right next to plant one and the cotyledons are getting darker Initially they were sort of a light green, but you know with exposure to the light from the lamp uh, The leaves look uh, even more robust and green now. So this is plant four and the cotyledons have unfolded and they're bright You know deep forest green uh, Very beautiful previously. I said I would remove this uh, empty seed husk, but it appears to be attached to the plant. I tried moving it yesterday and it seemed to move the whole plant with it so I don't want to damage anything. I'm going to leave that on. And this is the fifth seed to germinate. As you can see the development's a little different. It seems like the seed is stuck to the soil in some way so um, you can see the stem trying to form and straighten out with uh, the wrinkled cotyledons trying to break free and you know, I think that plant is still pretty much attached to the seed husk and you can actually see a thin membrane that runs parallel to the cotyledons, uh, you know, going into the ground. 
So uh, I don't know exactly what the separation process is, but uh, you know, I imagine there's a lot of membranous structures. And you know, yesterday I thought that was actually a root that attached to the seed. So like with plant four, I'm not going to touch the seed husk. I'll just let things progress naturally. And this is seed number six. Uh, this one is the most undeveloped out of the ones that have germinated but the stem and the root system have uh, turned green um, and I can see the cotyledons inside uh, this seed is just soaked thoroughly and you know um, I hope it doesn't mold or anything but uh, it's still day 12 but nine and a half hours since my last filming so as you can see uh, for seedling number five one half of the seed husk has fallen off and has landed in the soil and what you can see here is rather interesting it's basically um, you can see the cotyledons they are partly green in the parts that have been exposed to um, the light thus far but the halves that remain inside the seed attached to the other half of the seed husk are still white meaning these cotyledons basically don't begin chlorophyll production until they see the sun or in this case uh, the LED light and here's an alternate look at that from a different angle so you can see there's kind of a membranous structure uh, a film that kind of peels off and that's probably attached to the seed but anyway there's clearly a region of the cotyledons uh, at the tip that have been shielded from the light thus far and have remained white all this time so I expect by tomorrow they should turn green as well and the other half of the seed, seed husk should fall off another new development is that the shoot apical meristem in this plant number two has started um, growing elongating visibly and I expect new leaves to come out of that and further stem growth so the same is happening for plant number one as well, although it's not as obvious. It had a head start on plant two in the beginning, but the development was somewhat stunted due to the mutant nature of the seed, being two seed husks fused together. And finally, as you can see in this seed on the ground, near uh, seed number five, is a root system coming out of another seed. And if we look further over here, it's happening with another seed as well so everything is happening in pairs but there are still a lot of seeds that haven't germinated okay it's day 13 and to recap I planted 50 honeydew seeds and before I placed them on the soil I bought a bag of soil from a big box store I baked it in the oven at 300 Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes um, so that's well above boiling temperature that should have killed all microorganisms but um, you know I only washed the honeydew seeds in tap water I didn't do any special cleaning um, you know probably I could have just cleaned them with a soapy sponge and that would have helped a lot but as you can see I have a problem here one of these seeds has these uh, filamentous structures um, coming off the bottom uh, touching the soil so I think that's some kind of mold and I gotta remove that as quickly as possible I've noticed that some of these seeds uh, just seem to have that you know black lining it's some kind of you know black mold uh, I don't know what species it actually is but uh, I'll have to remove the surrounding dirt as well so with regards to mold extermination efforts um, obviously I don't want to spray uh, fungicides or any toxic chemicals on this pot because I have it on my table and you know no more than anyone else wants to have molecules of uh, you know potentially mildly poisonous toxins you know pesticides uh, just getting all over everything indoors so I'm thinking about other approaches you know maybe I'll try spraying this with a uh, solution of 70% isopropanol that I brought in a store and I've had for a long time um, I think that's worth a shot to try to sterilize um, the general surface of this entire culture um, just in case anything starts uh, cropping up again like this um, 
So yeah, that's the problem of growing things indoors. You don't have the hot sun, the hot California sun, just baking the soil and sort of sterilizing the surface. And if you're watering the soil every day, um, you know, all sorts of fungal spores will inoculate on the soil and start growing. So I think this is a common struggle that most plant owners uh, face. If it were outdoors, I would just spray it with fungicide and be done with it. So another thing that happened today was I moved the lamp, the LED lamp, that has a 5 watt LED bulb, which gives off the full spectrum of visible light uh, up on an object temporarily because the seedlings were growing too tall and especially you know this one uh, was right up against the lamp and it was kind of blocking out the light for the other plants so they were all growing towards the light in a straight line and I don't know whether these honeydew seeds will actually uh, grow as a vine or as a normal you know upright plant so this is a close-up of the cotyledons with the uh, dual you know, a few seed pots still attached for specimen one and you know the cotyledons are very verdant lush green and I don't know if you can see from here but uh, there's a apical shoot mare stem that's been starting to develop between the cotyledons before they've even shed off the seed and this is the top of plant number two and here you can clearly see what I'm talking about um, okay it's in focus now so here you have this uh, structure right over here kind of looks like um, well I don't know really how to describe it but it's sort of jagged and it's the basically the dominant the shoot apical meristem producing new structures so in any plant there's always a dominant apical meristem and if you cut that or an animal or insect eats it then um, the other surrounding apical meristems around it will become dominant through uh, plant hormone signaling and then they'll take over the lead role and try to make side branches that eventually will work their way and grow upwards too. Basically I'm wondering if that apical meristem will produce leaves uh, first of all that are different from these cotyledons uh, that happens with plants and Will the leaves uh, maybe sprout and develop, you know, maybe perpendicularly to what the current pair of the direction the cotyledons are facing in? So it'll be interesting to watch. So this is the third tallest one, and it's still got the seed husk attached. And, you know, it's still, it's coming along very well, but there's no shoot apical meristem uh, that's visible, although it's there. So one thing that's interesting is uh, this was maybe the fifth or the sixth seed. I believe it's the sixth one that germinated. Um, it was just a seed that seemed to be dormant on the soil for a long time. And one day it just shot up and half of the, you know, the seed pod just fell off quickly. Probably because it was a lot soggier and easier to shed. So in this one too it, it's very recent uh, unfolding of the cotyledons in fact this is the first plant to unfold its cotyledons so this one was actually the one where I wanted to remove the seed husk as soon as possible but it's kind of fused in there with the root um, too tight so when I tried to move it when the sapling was very small uh, the whole thing was shifting around in the soil so I just let it be um, so that's a problem you know I don't want seed husks growing mold but I haven't seen mold elsewhere so I'm just gonna assume that you know it was an isolated incident for that first uh, part of today's video and we talked about this yesterday but um, this is interesting because this plant still has half of the seed it attached to it and it has that membranous structure uh, you can see right here Yeah, that thing and that appears to be attached to seed it looks like some kind of membrane and you know up there I don't know what that is uh, I guess I still think that's like the cotyledons are part of it um, but you know based on the shape of these leaves and the wrap I don't think that it extends all the way there but I could be wrong I'm still waiting for it to turn green and uh, peel off with the cotyledons but 
you know that could just be the remaining structures of the seed with a little bit of uh, nutrients left in them uh, for the plant to use before it gets rid of it altogether. So on that same plant you can see here's the other half of the seed husk it's just in the ground but it seems kind of attached to the base of the where the stem ends and the root begins so I don't want to touch it for now unless I see a problem with mold. So here's another plant that's germinating nicely. Um, the seed husk is very sodden and somewhat discolored and because it has some of those black linings and I don't know if you can ever see this but uh, on the top edge there's a little bit of mold. Uh, it's really hard to see with the contrast against the soil so you know I'll think about my options. I, I might try some uh, isopropyl alcohol 70% spraying right after this to see if that does anything. If it doesn't I'll have to move on to more drastic measures but um, yeah mold's a problem when you constantly have to water plants. So here's another plant that's developing nicely and there are two others that have root systems just barely sticking out um, in the last 24 hours. So Aside from this, you know, I don't really see that many other seeds, uh, any seeds besides the eight that have activity uh, creating root systems. So I do see some seeds starting to grow black mold. So here's another specimen of an ungerminated seed that has a mold problem, as you can see with that black spot. And if we move over here, see another example as well. Um, it might be a different kind of mold or just more conspicuous but uh, I heard you can apply uh, white vinegar for instance but in those cases I think people are mostly getting rid of black mold on grout in bathroom tiles and things like that so uh, I definitely don't want to risk acidifying the soil with vinegar and thus killing off the healthy plants so what I just did in the last few minutes was I put on gloves and I threw away the three seeds that had mold and you know the mold didn't really get onto the surface of the soil and start uh, sending mold filaments everywhere so I'm not overly concerned at this point but I will you know spray some uh, isopropanol right now to try to kill that so now that I've sprayed the isopropanol there's that you know alcohol family smell um, they should go away pretty quickly. Uh, you know, there are some seed husks that are still kind of moldy looking. Uh, looking at that plant in particular, uh, you can't really see it well with all the glare, but uh, I'll have to deal with all of these later. But, you know, one other topic I wanted to discuss before the end of this video is how this plant right here, which is growing pretty tall, it's the one with the cotyledons uh, fully exposed. You know, I couldn't remove that seed husk towards the bottom. Um, it's somehow attached to the plant, so I'm not going to risk it. And it's already got roots right here uh, going along the edge of the glass bowl. Okay, so we can get a much better look here. So, you know, this dish is not very deep. I only have about maybe I would say five centimeters of soil until it hits the bottom so it's got no drainage and I actually haven't watered it thoroughly to the point where it's all soaking you know some parts are dry like if you look over here it's just dryness but there are other places where it's damp like there's another place where it's uh, basically dry so going back to over here you see that one plant with exposed cotyledons has sent down uh, secondary roots besides the main you know, tap root that have already hit the bottom. So at some point this entire pot is just going to become a big root ball and you know with all those roots it might actually push up the volume of the soil a little bit. So uh, right now I have a mold problem. I'm not watering as much. You know everything seems to be doing fine. Um, but, you know, I'll spray a little water later when the isopropanol has all evaporated from the surface. And, you know, if you've ever worked with any of the alcohol family members like ethanol and isopropanol, you know, once you spray them from a spray bottle, they're pretty much evaporated and vaporized within a few minutes.